law enforcement, would you, if you saw another officer doing something um, out of context, violating someone's rights, abusing them for absolutely no reason, you were not the initial responding officer but the backup, how would you handle that situation? This is Viper One Actual Media Productions doing an interview with Officer Ethan Anderson of the Elwood Police Department. Um, Officer Anderson, how long have you been with Elwood Police Department and do you have prior law enforcement before this? Yeah, so I've been in, been in law enforcement for going on six years. Um, two and a half years with Elwood, three and a half years in California. California, what part of California? Riverside County. Good deal, how do you like it out there? It was great. California's a great place to visit, terrible place to live. <laughs> Kind of miss the sunshine out there? A little bit. All right. Um, so, in light of the recent events this year, we've had a lot of negative um, outtake on law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, could you just give me kind of a day-to-day -day walkthrough, just kind of a brief of how your job is with the community and how positive it should be? Um, so, here at Elwood, we're uh, very much traffic-oriented. So, a lot of the interactions we have with the public are via traffic stops. Um, so day to day, you know, you try to just enforce the law while keeping people in a positive attitude, you know. So. All right. Any bad interactions? You I know? mean, there's bad interactions you know, all over the place with people, um, you know, not wanting to get stopped, not wanting to be late for work, stuff like that, but, you know, it is what it is. All right. And how do you think the community here, at least, feels about the uh, police department? Our town loves us. Our town loves how transparent we are, how active we are with our community. A lot of our officers go out and play basketball with kids, go door to door talking to neighbors and whatnot. They love us. They're very supportive of us. Awesome. And what kind of events do you guys try to hold with the community to try to mend things together and keep it that way? So every year we do National Night Out. Um, it's kind of a nationwide type deal with uh, law enforcement trying to bridge gap between law enforcement and the communities. Um, we do, you know, I teach DARE in school, so I'm in, involved with students' lives and stuff like that, um, along with, you know, our all the days, our community days, we're out there um, just trying to keep everyone safe, so, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Because um, I've noticed a lot of departments, you know, in the area kind of try to do the same thing, so. Mm -hmm. um, the whole basis of the interview is to bring light on law enforcement. Because, um, again, every day it's just, it's a battle for law enforcement to, you know, do their jobs, go home safe. And what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, these are people, you know, yep. you're a person, you have family, whether you have a, you know, a wife, whether you have kids, you know, all that good stuff, you still have uncles, brothers, so forth. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, what do you think of the defund the police situation? Do you think that's a good idea to defund some of it or defund all of it? Or well, how and, do you feel? Everything we're talking about today is my own personal opinion. It doesn't right. really reflect the opinion of the Elwood Police Department. Um, there's parts of this movement that I can agree with, um, along with parts that I can't agree with. Uh, when you look at Elwood, we're a very small community, very small police department. So if you were to defund our police department, it would take resources away from the town. Um, I do think that more funding should go into the uh, more problem-oriented areas, such as certain areas of Chicago, certain areas of Los Angeles, certain areas of New York, but not so much the funding the police department as well as funding certain aspects of the community to lift it up instead of having the same recurring door. Right, right. All right. Uh, now, as far as with the current situation, the defund the police and, you know, all the riots and mm -hmm. protests and everything that are going on, um, i trying to search for the right way to say it. And I don't, if you can't answer the question, please, by all means, don't, because I'm not here to get you in trouble with any mm -hmm. policies or anything. But with that situation in Minneapolis, okay. um, those four officers, do you agree that they all took part in his death, whether they intended or not? Nah, uh, so, yes and no. Okay. Uh, Derek Chauvin, the officer who was seen kneeling on Mr. Floyd, uh, needs to be held responsible for his actions. Um, there, there's also body cam footage, there's statements, there's stuff made from the other officers attempting to gain control of the situation. Um, I feel like those officers need to be held accountable for not 
not, you know, we have the uh, we have the duty to what's the word I'm looking for? We have the duty to intervene. So the officers that didn't intervene that could have need to be held responsible. But the officers that attempted to intervene, I feel like probably should be held a little bit different than the category of Derek Chapman. Right. So with everything that's been going on as law enforcement, would you, if you saw another officer doing something um, out of context, violating someone's rights, abusing them for absolutely no reason, you were not the initial responding officer but the backup, how would you handle that situation? Would you hold that officer accountable or would you just go with it and deal with it later? So personally, I believe in the peer policing method. Um, we're only as good as our partner. So if our partner steps out of line, it's our duty to, number one, get bring that to their attention. Number two, correct, have them correct their own behavior. It's a self-integrity issue. Um, if I personally saw an officer violating someone's rights or doing something a little wonky, um, yeah, definitely we have a duty to intervene as police officers. Um, it's not my it's not my duty to second guess an officer though if he's making a, an arrest and I'm sure second on second on scene. It's not my duty. It's not my job to, you know, pause the moment if my partner needs help doing something. Then absolutely, I'm going to jump in and help my partner because at the end of the day we have to go home, you know. Right. But if it comes to the fruition that the person violated someone's rights, then yes, we all need to help be held accountable. All right. Now, along with that question, uh, this is one question I know some of my. Uh, family members, AK subscribers, have wanted me to ask, and I personally would like to ask too, have you or would you ever take into custody arrest a bad cop if you saw him doing something illegal? Like I said, like I said before the interview, we have checks and balances. Um, it's not necessarily my position to be doing that. I am not a supervisor. I am not a chief of police. Um, it is my duty to intervene when something like that happens and bring it to the attention of my supervisors if that warrants it. Okay. But as far as actually putting a police officer in custody after an incident that I have no idea what that initial beginning of it was, that's not my current position to do. But if you actually physically witnessed him doing, him or her doing something illegal right there from start to finish? Personally, probably not. Because it's, again, it's not my duty to do that. It is not my job title to do that. Yes, I would bring it to attention of my supervisors. And yes, I would make sure that person's held accountable. But as far as handcuffing and arresting a police officer on scene, probably not going to happen. All right. And in closing, uh, I've actually checked out a lot of records mm -hmm. here. And, you know, I have not seen any black marks against, you know, any officers here. And is there anything you would like to say as far as a positive note to not just the community, but also law enforcement as a whole. Any kind of message you want to send out there in light of all the circumstances that are going on right now to try to help basically bring the community back with the police? Well, a lot of times when I tell people who are saying, you know, all cops are bad cops, you hear the A cab, all cops are bad, so we're not. You know, this is what I do for a living, but this is not who I am. I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a son, I'm a brother. Um, I do everything I can every day to make the world a better place a better place for my children to grow up in, and all I want to do is help people. I didn't come in this, this I didn't come in this line of work to put you know, put the marks on people. I actually joined here to help people and make a positive impact on people's lives. Awesome deal. And that's a lot of that's how a lot of officers feel as well. Right, right. And do you believe in the oath that you swore to uphold Absolutely. the Constitution? Absolutely. Now, actually, one last question: Do you feel that that oath ends when you end your career or whatever in law enforcement? No, I mean, if you look at the human nature, it's our we're, we have a duty to help each other, right? You help your neighbor, gosh, I'll help my neighbor if, you, if you're a religious person. But you should always try every day to be a good person. So just because I swore an oath to protect and serve doesn't mean that when I take this off, that's that's it. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of times I help people off duty. A lot of times I help on crashes. I help people that fall. That doesn't just end here. You know what I'm saying? And that's how every officer is. Awesome deal. So this has been Viper One. This is an interview with Officer Ethan Anderson at Elwood Police Department, a very fine, outstanding human being and also an officer uh, with no bad record that I can see. So here we are just trying to highlight law enforcement. I'm not here to bash. We need to start moving things back together um, instead of separating because there's too much division, folks. Um, I will be doing more interviews with other officers coming up and look forward to that. Other than that, folks, we need to come together, make a stand. I appreciate it, and I'll see you all on the next one.